Hi, uh, my name is Vishal Shah. I'm a Senior Director of Product Marketing for Automotive and Displays. And today, we are showcasing our latest generation of automotive product called SmartBridge SP7900 uh, with the local dimming capability. So, so it has very deep blacks? It has a deep blacks and, and high, very high contrast ratio that and you can see from OLED screen. So this is an LCD screen with OLED-like contrast ratio. So it can provide a very high brightness, a very high contrast ratio, and also can save significant power by having a direct array of the LED backlight that you can control depending on the uh, type, the screen that is being displayed, images being displayed on the screen. That's very nice for 50% of the day uh, when it's night, uh, right? When people drive in the night, you want to be distracted by uh, too bright of a display. It needs to be able to come down. Yeah, it can. It can. It can lower the uh, depending on the uh, ambient light settings. It can lower the uh, display and keep the contrast ratio. So you can still have the very vivid display uh, and save the power by reducing the backlight strength. And you can adjust some things here at the show. Yeah, so, so the demo right now, it's in auto run mode. So it runs in the local dimming off case, then, then it turns on the local dimming, then it shows side by side by splitting the half screen in local dimming on and local dimming off. And also, we have a very cool feature, a very, very uh, impressive feature that can show a new person who does not know much about local dimming to showcase how local dimming actually works. So it also have a mode called a backlight display. So in the next uh, display that will come, uh, this uh, this one is just showcasing that only the LEDs that are that has actual an image content will turn on, uh, and then it, that way you can save the power and also have a very high contrast ratio. And one of the advantage of LCD is also the highest peak brightness potentially. It could be very high. Very high. Yes, it can get go up as, as high as 2,000 nits, uh, even higher if uh, if a backlight supports it. Uh, and we can, uh, our smart bridge can support any any settings that LCD requires. So when it's very sunny day, you see everything, and when it's dark night, you can dim everything down. Everything is the, nice, also. Yeah, you can dim down the LCD. It's 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 high brightness that you cannot get with OLED screens. So what can you adjust here? So you can actually you can turn on and off the the screen the the the, the local dimming. So with this case right now, it's showcasing a uh, same video playing, but only you can see how the backlights are moving. So depending on the fireworks, different portions of the backlight being illuminated. This is just to showcase how the local dimming technology works. Now I'll, I'll showcase the normal image and this is with local dimming off. And you can see there is some gray. This is, the, this is showcasing the lot of light leakage. This is showing a lot of light leakage because the local dimming being off. You can see the blacks are actually, there is a sort of a grayish tint on the black, right? It's not true black, so contrast is not very high. By turning on local dimming, now we can see blacks are very deep black, and then the contrast ratio is very, very good. And, and in this mode also, we can see side-by-side -side comparison by disabling local dimming on the left side of the screen, and then right side of the screen has uh, local dimming enabled, and you can see the difference in the contrast between the two. So the right side looks much, much more vivid, uh, more spectacular in terms of overall quality, and then left side has a lot of grayish black. So, so that's the advantage of local dimming. And the way Synaptics local dimming works is it can it can also provide high level, higher uh, image performance with the low number of zones that provides the cost savings without giving up the performance. Is it? Uh... Is, it, is that based on some special kind of AI tricks, uh, uh, image processing to optimize what needs to be dimmed and what doesn't need to exactly. be dimmed? Exactly. There is a lot of secret juice behind uh, how the local dimming is being implemented. We do all gate level implementation. This is all done in the hardware, so super fast, very low latency response. So it, it, it analyzes the image that's coming in, and then based on that, it adjusts the local dimming parameters and then, then drives the LED backlight accordingly. So there is no lag. There is no, there, even if you have a very fast moving screen, you, you cannot see any display lagging. It, it's, it's instantaneous improvisation on the contrast ratio. 
Uh, so that's that's one of the great ways to improve the LCD is to do all these local dimmings. That's right. And is Synaptics a big player in the local dimming market, or Syn are you focusing just for automotive? Or so Synaptics has a local dimming technology in for all all LCD displays that can play in different markets. So right now, that this this technology is very very prominent or more valuable in automotive, and we have the same technology for VR market as well, where LCD screens are still majority of the market. Uh, for mobile phone, this is applicable as well, but mobile phone is more moving to OLED, so uh, it's less adopted in mobile. How about uh, TV business? For, for, uh, for TV, all, yeah, it's, it's very, the, what you see in Samsung QLED, those are all local dimming technology. Of course, they do it at a very gross level in terms of the, the zone pitches are more uh, higher, so just to control the cost as well. So. Uh, it's not, the performance is not as spectacular as, as you can see in the automotive screens because the UIs are also very, uh, very um, high resolution and, uh, and very detail oriented user interfaces. So, so uh, there's a bunch of robot taxis coming out soon. It's going to be a nice future with very bright entertainment. That's right. Maybe there could be bigger displays and people are going to be watching, they want to watch Netflix. They want to watch yeah. uh, YouTube videos. Yeah. They want to do all this stuff on the robot taxi with a very big display, yeah. and maybe there's also want to have sunlight coming in from the windows, yeah. so you need to have an LCD with local dimming, high peak brightness. Correct, so so now, in, just not just for robot taxi, even even any any car, you can see the amount of display content, it's getting getting very, very high, high right, in terms of number of displays. It used to be just one center display, now clusters are being very uh, large display sizes, there is a passenger display to, to for allowing passenger to view the the content, uh, watch Netflix if you would play games. There is also rear seat displays, and of course there are external displays with a very high brightness. So, so this technology allows you to adapt to the environment you are in, the user in, and and dim the display when when there is a night mode, and and turn up the brightness when there is a uh, very high bright high brightness condition like in sunlight. Maybe the display. Uh flips down from the ceiling of the car or it scrolls up or some kind of thing. It doesn't have to be flexible, but it just appears. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when you don't need to look at the road anymore, you just want to be entertained. Yeah. That's I what mean, I'm thinking. It's going to be a big thing. That should be. And then, but the, that just allows more and more displays to be integrated in the car. So yeah, I mean, uh, local dimming works in any kind of environment, uh, but it's, it's mainly applicable for LCD displays, right? So yeah. So uh, that means you, you need to trigger all these LEDs. You have a system to, to yeah. run the LEDs. That's how you, your system is working, right? Correct. There are, there are the, we can support as high as 4,000 LCD LEDs behind this display. So in this particular display, it's about 500 LEDs uh, because of the smaller size of the display. It's about 12 inch of the display, but our smart bridge can support up to 4,000 separate LEDs behind the display. So it can it can go very very fine pitch, very small sizes of the uh, displays and zones to grow give a even higher performance advantages. So how is your local dimming technology better than a competitor? So what we have observed in in uh, competitive analysis, our competition does this based on a software implementation, which requires a lot of frame collection, display frame that is, and then then filter filter out the the, the noise and also calculate the local dimming, which adds latency and lag in the display. What we do is a complete hardware-based implementation and, and, and also we also analyze display that's being displayed rather than just controlling the backlight. So we do it in conjunction rather than just a, 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 a processing one aspect of the backlight only. That, that allows us to get a very high uh, image quality and also uh, power savings and uh, overall performance advantage. Is it one of the advantage of Synaptics is doing on the silicon? On that's the chip? correct, that's correct. That's one of the major advantage because user experience is all about having instantaneous feedback on what is being displayed and having done it in hardware gives you zero latency, almost zero latency to, to be able to show that on the display. So is your technology in millions of displays already for the local dimming or so is it? We are just launching into the just market. Launching. Just launching into the market, lots of customer uh, interaction, a lot of customer uh, uh, proof of concepts in place. So you should see this in next coming year to, to be uh, in the cars on the road.
does it does it make sense to have any kind of like cameras around the car that uh, can report back to the silica what's happening in terms of the experience somehow? Uh, does that make any sense what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, no, it does make sense, and and that's certainly one of the one of the areas that to be to be developed on. I mean, we don't have a solution today, but that's something we are looking at constantly to see if we can actually external cameras one, but also looking at internal driver monitoring system to see uh, uh, integrate the driver monitoring system inside the display and see if we can process monitoring the driver to add some more safety aspects of it using our AI algorithms. Because maybe there is more uh, more delicate, uh, what's it called, measurement of the ambient situation That's with more correct. cameras somehow to really optimize your brightness and your color dimming and everything to the exact situation of the ambient light. So that, that is an interesting interesting uh, idea, but you don't need to do that as far as, because we our algorithm looks at the image that's coming in, so it, it and it does it in a same frame instantaneously. So it does not require so much information of surrounding amb ambient. It knows the image coming in and it can calculate the local dimming parameters just based on the image data coming in. So we can save costs by not requiring so much external information as well. So you're partnering with the whole display industry for this? That's correct. We are engaged with every uh, display manufacturer and uh, different tier ones and OEMs and everybody has been very receptive of our technology and performance so far. And it goes from small to very big. It can go. It can go from very small VR displays to the automotive display, 50 inch automotive displays. 50. 50 inches, yes. And some people are making uh, 115 inch LCDs in the show. That's you right. Uh, yeah, we can do that. I mean, this bigger. this product is targeted for automotive, but yeah, I mean, the technology can be applicable to TV, very large, large size TVs as well. That's correct. And here we are showcasing the local dimming technology enabled by our smart bridge SB7900. And in this particular demo, we are showcasing side-by-side -side comparison of Synaptics' local dimming using smart bridge versus our competitor's similar solution uh, with the local dimming capability. And, and uh, everything in this demo, in this panel, it's using same panel, same backlight. Only thing difference between the two panels is a smart bridge that drives this displays. So on the right, it, it's a SB7900, and on the left, it's a competitor solution, uh, and same panel as I mentioned earlier. So what's the difference people can see? So, so in this particular, uh, when you play a normal video like this, you can see the display, the images are very, very spectacular. You can see the deep blacks, very good contrast ratio, but that's, that's not all about, uh, that's not all when it comes to automotive UI, because yeah, you can, you can have the simple displays look very stunning, but automotive UI with the cluster and a lot of instrumentation display, it's, it's, it, it can be very dynamic. And then local dimming performance can make or break the difference. So we can showcase some of the killer patterns that can show the difference of superior local dimming of synaptics versus the similar the a similar technology but lower performance from our competition. Uh, is it running on the chip so, there? So yeah, yeah. The one on the center, uh, the big, uh, the, the chip in the center. That's our smart bridge SB7900. And uh, so, in all kinds of scenarios, it provides better performance. Correct. You can see that the the blacks are super black, and then you can see the performances looks very, 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 very good. Now, this is this is where things starts getting interesting. You can see we are the, the, we, we, we call this a killer pattern where a, a small white box moves on the black screen. And, and if the local dimming technology and local dimming processing is not done right, you can have image artifact. Image artifact can start showing. And this is very relevant to the automotive displays where there is a lot of dark background with white, white objects on the dark background and you don't want to have any artifacts. So that's, that's what we are showcasing, that, that we don't lose brightness, we don't lose any, uh, we don't have any image artifact versus the, uh, on the competition, disp uh, the display with the competitive solution, you can see the brightness starts, it's losing the brightness. Also, there are some bands that you can start seeing. So that's, that, that can create a lot of image issues.